Hello and welcome back to the bench. Today I'm looking at this little DC to DC step down converter with LCD display. And what's nice about this is it'll display voltage and amperage on the LCD and it's adjustable with these little micro switches instead of turning a pot. It also comes with this um, plexiglass enclosure and let's put it together. So first I'm going to cut open this package to see what's inside. Looks like got a bunch of plexiglass or polycarbonate pieces with the protective film still on them. Laser cut. Looking at the cuts, they actually look pretty well made. They're very sharp. And got some extensions for the micro switches. I'm assuming fit in there and we've got two bolts and they probably thread onto these star shaped holes so this will probably be the bottom but before doing any of this it'd be a shame if it didn't work so I should hook it up to a power supply and see what we've got so this is the voltage in and the ground voltage out and the ground so I'm just going to connect going to connect about 20 volts to this. Um, that is what the manual recommended. The voltage in is at the edge here, so my red connection for that. And the ground is in the middle. And I'm going to turn on my power supply, no guarantee that there's going to be no smoke. And there we go, power's on. Display is pretty bright. Set to 6 volts. Should be able to lower the voltage. Oh yeah. And increase it. Seems to be working put it in the box. So I'm just going to start by peeling off the protection. And it looks like it's on there pretty good. I wanted to do this on camera but uh, I don't think I have the dexterity to do it so I'll pause and I'll be back after. Now that all the protections taken off I'm going to start assembling it and I'm going to assemble it from upside down because these parts actually have feet that stick out and so you can't really lay it flat and build it up. So what I'll do is I'll put these button extenders in and then I will sit this unit upside down and, and these screw terminals have to be accessed through these holes. So I'll line it up like that. And then they have to be accessed through the front with these holes, put that in a little knob, and this is very easy assembly, it just all goes in together and then the screws will hold it in a friction fit, so I put this in and the other side, and then we have uh, solder joints that stick up here and so they'll fit into these slots here. So I'll see if I can line this all up. First with the tall feet. A little bit of a finicky job because it doesn't sit flat on the bench because of the reliefs for the screws or the, the uh, buttons and for the feet. Okay, now that this is tight feed a screw through the front and you can't screw it from the back unfortunately because the holes are star shaped Grab a screwdriver the holes are star shaped on the back side and therefore they wouldn't thread through the front so 
And there's the finished product. You can access your terminals here, tighten and loosen through here. And they've got little feet here so that it, doesn't, it sits up from the bench a little bit. So now all that's left is to test it. And so now we're going to test out its unloaded voltage. So I'm just going to plug it into my power supply here. Here we go. So it shows 2.96 volts and we're getting an unloaded voltage of 3.04, 3.05, which is pretty close. And let's see what we get if we move it. We'll go up to 5 volts, another common voltage. four point nine nine displayed on the LCD and five point one on the multimeter that's actually not bad especially for the price of this unit um, and the stuff that I do around here um, the difference between four point nine nine and five point one is really not that significant so let's go up a little bit more I am feeding this through twenty volts um, coming in that's what the uh, eBay listing said was the preferred voltage. That's what I'm doing. Although my power supply is a 25 volt power supply, I'm stepping it down first. So I'm losing a little bit of efficiency, but it's a switching power supply. So it's not that bad. I'm going to move this up to about 12 volts, which is another common voltage. It is a little sensitive, but the buttons are much nicer than fiddling with a pot. Starting to get only single digit read here, so let's go down as close as we can. Twelve volts. We got twelve point two seven. And that's pretty darn close. And now we're going to try its uh, loaded voltage. Now you may not be able to see because I'm not going to be running at very high voltage, but this is a twelve volt um, fog light. Uh, made of LEDs, which uh, are actually just 50-50 uh, LEDs you would get on typical uh, strip lights. And uh, we're going to try to push just, just a small current, probably about uh, 20 milliamps or so, through this and see if the voltage is maybe truer than before. So I'm going to turn this on and uh, I hope this doesn't swamp the camera but I don't think so because it's only at 12 volts in a typical this is an automotive bulb that so typically runs around 14 volts so let me just plug this into the power supply and there we go it's lit we have about uh, 40 milliamps running through and this is reading uh, between 11.9 to 12 it's fluctuating I think it's settled now 11.9 and look at that our readings almost dead on and so really uh, if you have a, a mild load on this it improves the accuracy greatly now I'm gonna lower it a little bit to get to the point where these are barely lit probably around 9 volts maybe a little bit higher 10 10 or so I'm gonna lower this so we have 10 volts and you can see the brightness is severely lowered and we're getting about uh, 10 milliamps and showing 10 volts and we have 10.1 so it does get more accurate when you put a little bit more load onto it and now I'm going to take a look at the accuracy of the amps on this unit so I have this set to 12 volts again because I think it was uh, 40 milliamps that we were seeing th on the LCD here but now I have my meter here set in amps that up so you can see it. It's on the milliamp range, so I should be able to get close to 40. We will see. Let me plug it in right now. And so here we've got 40 milliamps approximately, and we don't know if this is terribly accurate because there's no more digits after the the four. But here we can see we actually have 41 and a half milliamps. And so this unit is actually pretty accurate. And so there you have it. For the price, this is a great little unit. Um, I'll post the price on the bottom here, but it was uh, less than 10 Canadian dollars with the enclosure, which is great. It doesn't quite suit my needs. Um, 
out of the box because it does require um, about a 20 volt power supply. It can go down a bit, but 20 volts is the recommended. And I have 25 volts, um, which is beyond its maximum of 23, I believe. And so I do use a little uh, DC DC step down converter, um, but that's just because I don't need very much amperage. So uh, in a future video, I will modify this so that it's uh, more convenient for my purposes, and I'll post that up as well. I hope you like the video. Enjoy.